You are listening to the Fairways and Fundraising Podcast, powered by Golf Event Planning, discussing charity fundraising and successful golf outings, along with tips and tricks of the trade. Now here's your host, Larry Battaglia. Hello, 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 and welcome to Fairways and Fundraising, powered by Golf Event Planning. I'm your host, Larry Battaglia, and today we have a remote session again as we're still in quarantine. A gentleman I've been working with now for the last few years, we did an earlier podcast with him from the Help America Here Foundation. We're talking today more about the postponement of the golf outing, which is now going to be the end of August. We'll get into that too, and a little COVID-19 discussion with a good friend from the Help America Here Foundation, Greg Thomas. How you doing, Greg? Doing fantastic, Larry. Thanks for having me today. Greg, thanks very much for your time. Uh, it's a pleasure, and I can't tell you enough that I can't wait till we're back out there on the course and enjoying, maybe it's a drink, maybe it's a, a moment uh, with your son, John, at the John Thomas Golf Classic later in August, you know, watching him get out there on the course and hit those great shots that he hit last year at the event. It's something we can look forward to. But before we get into talking about the August 24th golf outing, which was rescheduled from June 18th, Explain to the listeners about what you went through with the uh, coronavirus. Both you and your wife had tested positive, correct? Yeah, that's correct, Larry. Well, much like you mentioned, we have a lot to look forward to, but uh, can't look forward without reflecting on what has passed. 2020 has been a, an interesting year for all of us, uh, not just here in New York, but nationwide and worldwide. And we have a lot to... Uh, hopefully celebrate come August 24th at the John Thomas Golf Classic. But my wife and I certainly experienced things early. My very last meeting was at a Brooklyn hospital on Friday the 13th. And I said to my colleague, if we don't contract the coronavirus from this meeting, we're never going to get it. That was Friday, March 13th, right? Friday, March 13th. That's correct. It was very quick onset of symptoms, uh, loss of taste and smell and all those GI side effects and rapid onset of lung problems for me. And I was very fortunate to avoid the hospital. Many of my physician friends helped me through it from home. So I got it. My wife got it. A month later, I had a relapse of symptoms, again, with my lungs and then into my heart. Like many of us go through changes in our lives that it changed mine a little bit. So now I'm on some medication. I have a little bit of a different outlook on life. I look at my kids differently, but I also look at my spare time a lot differently. So being forced to work from home uh, has made me look around at the world around me. Obviously, my honey-do list is now empty. I've done everything I can, and all I want to do is get back to golf and have a good time on August 24th. So I am really glad that we're talking about this, and I'm really excited for the opportunity to get back out there and, and really use that time as a celebration. Yeah, and it's going to be a celebration this year because of what we've all gone through. But again, your personal story, you and your wife contracting the coronavirus, and as you said, having a, a different outlook on life. I think we all have a different outlook, whether we have contracted it or not, or maybe we've lost a loved one. The world is going to be a different place once we start coming out of this. Right now, during this taping, we are at phase two in New York, which now we're starting to get out there. Maybe it's outdoor dining, still social distancing and making sure that we're protecting ourselves and each other. But I still feel when we get to August and August 24th, you're going to find that it's going to be one of the first golf outings maybe on the calendar of the year. And it's just going to be a sense of relief and enjoyment to just get out there with our friends and our supporters that have helped us so much at the John Thomas Golf Classic. You're absolutely right, Larry. And I'm glad to be working with you on this and having golf event planning, managing uh, the John Thomas Golf Classic, because this is what you do and you do well, is to look at the big picture and to take those precautions. So, you know, all of the PPE, if need be, will be on hand. 
we'll take any precautions we can to make sure all the attendees are safe. Risk is at a very, very bare minimum. And honestly, I've seen nothing but positive, positive things uh, over the last couple of weeks to a month that are leading us to believe that hopefully we won't need to worry about transmission in the months to come. But that is all for the scientists to uh, determine. But I think all of us need to have a good time. We need to get back to enjoying quality of life. And with golf event planning, I have no doubt that you're going to help us put together a phenomenal event that will be one of the best golf outings of the year as it was last year for any, any attendee. Well, thank you, Greg. I appreciate those kind words. And, but again, we can't do it with great people like you and other individuals that are involved with this great golf outing and this wonderful foundation and the sponsors. Why don't we start? We touched on this a little bit in our earlier podcast a few months back, but we can start with our committee and most notably our honoree this year, John Michael. Absolutely. John Michael of Service and Associates Law Firm is being honored this year. Over the last month to two months, I've spent quite a bit of time with John during the pandemic and seen him doing nice things for people for no reason at all. And every time that I get to talk to him and hear different stories from him, it just makes me proud that we selected him to honor him this year at the John Thomas Golf Classic. So John Michael is a great family man. He does a lot for his community. He does a lot for his friends. He does a lot for his colleagues and, uh, and perfect strangers at that. So I'm kind of excited to have him and his whole family there to, to witness us honoring him. Obviously, at the end of the day, our goal is to help people who can't afford hearing aids with Help America Here. It's just going to be uh, that much further strengthened by bringing good people like John in to honor him. Absolutely. And for those of you listeners that don't know, the John Thomas Golf Classic benefits the Help America Here Foundation. John Thomas is Greg's son, who's 11 now. And a few years ago, Greg purchased hearing aids at the Help America Here Foundation golf outing and David Carr from McGuire's Hearing Center fitted young John Thomas, and it changed his life forever. That it did. It changed his life forever, and I couldn't be more excited this year. My son is getting a little older, but he understood at a very young age what it was to to help other people achieve what he achieved, better hearing, the ability to socialize, the ability to not be missing out on the world around you. John, as a parent that doesn't have hearing problems, and no one in my family does, my son, we think we're doing the best for him, and we, we believe in that until we see the other side of it, until we try to put ourselves truly in his shoes and see the world being missed around him. And, and that was something that I missed early on. We thought we were doing the best we could, but the Help America Hear Foundation changed his life, got him better hearing instruments, got him better hearing care from the healthcare perspective for ongoing maintenance and management of his, I can't even call it a disability anymore, but his condition. We manage that very well. And technology keeps getting better. That's one of the other things, attendees, you know, a lot of people want to help because they know someone who has a hard time hearing or whose life has been impacted by the loss of hearing. And coming to this event every year, you get to learn more about the very best technology that's available out there through some of the best experts in the field. And speaking of the the great technology and how John's life has been changed and impacted, when you come to the John Thomas Golf Classic, one of the highlights is John getting up there and giving his speech every year. I mean, that is a showstopper every year. I'm looking forward to that on August 24th. I think he is too, Larry. Um, John has found his calling. He seems to very much enjoy being able to raise money for those people in need. And I can't tell you what it means as a father to see your son be the ambassador or someone there to usher uh, new hearing aids to the people right there on the spot. It, it's rather emotional. And, and I know without a doubt, I'm looking forward to it again this year to see those people get it. There's always tears in the audience, but I think the biggest blessing is those people who are truly in need of hearing instruments and, and better medical care to actually get it right there. It's a truly inspiring 
reception that goes on after the golf outing. So it's not just a golf outing. It's not just a, a day of hitting golf balls, coming back and a quick little award ceremony for the golfers who shot the best or the worst, but it actually is a meaningful experience the whole day through. I yeah, it. I say it every year and I'm prepared when we get there and we know that we have the recipients in the audience and John's going to come up and speak and you hear his compassion. Again, 11-year-old boy that has really embraced this mission of helping others less fortunate have the power and gift of hearing that he was given a few years back. But I know it's going to happen. I know we're going to get emotional. And yet every year, it's that tear jerk moment that we do a lot of these golf outings through the year. And this is always just one of those events that you can really connect with the mission of the charity and the people they help. You, you just can't help but be emotional. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, it's, it's a need that still across the country is unmet by the medical community. Insurance companies typically don't cover hearing aids. And if they do, they cover the very low end bottom line hearing aids. And Help America Here this year, actually our corporate sponsor for the event, their U.S. base is right here in Hopog, New York, and it is Widex Hearing Instruments. Widex has taken the corporate sponsorship, and we're hoping uh, a bigger part in the entire charity for the Help America Hear Foundation to provide hearing aids for those in need. It means so much to the foundation to have the corporate support of Widex, not only just you know financially, but also to be able to donate these hearing aids to reach more people to to give them the opportunity to to hear. Maybe for some, the first time in their life. The Help America Hear Foundation right now going through this COVID nineteen process. I don't think people really understand what the challenges are right now for them, which is why we have to continue these fundraising efforts. Right, Greg? Oh, no question about it. This is a, a very rare thing that we've experienced with the pandemic. It has changed every way of life for all of us in the U.S. and, and worldwide. And imagine having hearing loss during this time. You can't go out of your house. You can't have people in. No more lip reading, right? <laughs> Everything over the phone or via the computer. And a lot of our older generation isn't very proficient on the computer. So needless to say, the need for hearing aids and better hearing did not change. It only increased. One of the other things that has impacted those folks is a lot of the other charities around the country closed up shop or diminished their operating capabilities just because of COVID-19. And Help America Hear and its founder, Mitch Shapiro. Mitch is relentless in his drive to find people better hearing, to get them hearing instruments. And Help America Hear has actually seen a huge increase in need from across the country for hearing devices. Because our fellow charities have stopped operating, they've turned them to Mitch and to Help America Hear. And Mitch is doing his best. And if you can imagine what it's like for a charity to take on additional volume and try to find people better hearing, they're contacting medical practices across the country, uh, hearing practices, audiologists and hearing aid providers, to try to get them to donate their time to perfect strangers. It is not easy to do, but Mitch does it so well. And his team, of his support staff is fantastic at this. So. I'm very encouraged, but I think the need has only gone up. Um, and that means myself, I have to work harder to help raise money so that his team is successful in doing this. I want to see more and more people receive the gift of hearing. The need has gotten larger. I'm just going to keep doing my part. My son is my motivation and my mom who had hearing loss and I couldn't help her. So I think we, we have a great opportunity in front of us not just to help a lot of people on August 24th, but to get the heck out of our houses finally. Right? <laughs> that's, that's right. And it's going to be one of those first events that people can really put it on their calendar to say, you know, I'm getting out, I'm doing good in the community. I'm going to a great, great charity event where I'm helping people who need the help. And 
for this organization, Mitch Shapiro, and for those of you that don't know, he's blind and deaf, and not something he was born with either, that over the course of time, a very rare disease, uh, he became blind and deaf, and he still works tirelessly to be able to pair these doctors with the recipients. But that's also been a challenge during this pandemic is to find the healthcare professionals that are able and, and willing during a pandemic to help someone, like you said, a total stranger. Absolutely. And uh, we've, we've seen a lot of great acts of kindness and giving heroism over the last many months. And, you know, when this is all gone, and we hope it's soon, and get back to normal, we still have those who are in dire need of help. And where there is no insurance that pays for it, that's where we come in with, with helping those who can't hear. You know, Help America Hear Foundation helps upwards of 150 patients a year receive free hearing aids and free services to ma maintain those hearing aids. We need to up our game. There's a lot more people in need right now. That takes a lot of people coming together. And thank goodness we have the support of WIDEX Hearing Aids. We have the Help America Hear Foundation and all its volunteers that operate on a very small operating budget. And I guess, you know, it's pretty plain and simple what we've got to do. We got to make this an event that people have fun at. And I think we've done that over the years. The food has been fantastic over the years. The raffles have been amazing. The auction items, all the way down to the facilities. This will be at Huntington Crescent Club. Last year, I believe it had just reopened after they redid the clubhouse. And honestly, it was breathtaking. It's like a five diamond hotel inside. The locker rooms are pristine. The facilities are phenomenal. The views are fantastic. And the course is always in excellent shape. So I'm really looking forward to getting to spend more time hitting golf balls uh, than speaking and getting all of the right people together to support the cause, seeing old friends, new friends, you name it. I think all of us kind of miss the camaraderie of, of being out there among friends and, and smiling and laughing and hitting some bad golf shots and some good golf shots, right? I agree, Greg. The website is helpamericahere.org. The golf outing, as Greg mentioned, is at the Huntington Crescent Club on August 24th. 2020, just a few months away, it'll sneak up on us. Uh, but now we're starting to get back into the, the planning stages. We're going to have our Zoom meetings and we're going to start putting the pieces together to make it a very wonderful event, a lot of fun, but also adhering to the social distancing guidelines that we have to and making sure that our golfers and guests feel safe and secure. And, you know, that'll be a work in progress. We'll see the next couple of months how we're going to execute certain things. But we have the flexibility at the Huntington Crescent Club with such a beautiful clubhouse. There's a beautiful outdoor patio uh, deck out back that overlooks the golf course where if we have to be outside for breakfast and for dinner, we certainly have that flexibility. No question. Breakfast was outside last year. And Tables were enormous and spread out, overlooking the entire course. Just a great, great location for an event like this at a time like this. So I will have to say, Greg, you know, you mentioned about hitting golf balls and good shots and bad shots. The outing's a couple of months away, and, you know, most of us haven't really been working too much these days. So have you maybe been working on your golf game a little bit to prepare for this uh, fun golf outing, or... Or have you not had a chance to get out there? I know you were sick for a while. Larry, I've got a golf course two doors down, and I haven't set foot on it since the pandemic hit. I wish I could. Work has been busier than ever. It is almost uh, a tragedy to have the nice days like we have and not many of us getting out. And that's why uh, I have my sights set on August 24th. I'm going to have to get out there quickly and soon uh, to get my game back in order. Yeah, well, you have a couple of months and, um, you know, maybe you and I will get out there and tee it up and just, again, you know, try to feel better days are, are ahead, better days are, are here. Hopefully in, in August, on August 24th, we're just going to have a great day all around with those that support this great foundation, friends, family, and sponsors. 
Absolutely. You know, if it's anything like last year was, it's going to be much like the our chairman of the Help America Here Foundation golf outing, David Gustin, said last year, if you focus on one golf outing a year, let this be the one you focus on and that you attend because it is phenomenal from start to finish. Yeah, it really is. I'll have all the links in our show notes. They also have a great, great promotional video about the event. We shot it last year. Some great, great people that come to this event year in and year out and that support and donate. And we're so looking forward to just seeing seeing those individuals there as well. So uh, we mentioned David Carr a little bit. Why don't we touch on some of the great work that he does and his team to help fit these recipients that the foundation helps and supports? Yeah. David Carr and McGuire's Hearing Centers have changed my son's life and changed our lives along with it. David has, I think it's 10 plus locations in the New York metro area now, but David has been an integral part of Help America Here uh, for the last decade plus. He is the president of the charity. He works tirelessly to try to work on corporate partnerships to provide, provide those hearing aids to those in need for us. And, you know, Widex has come out of that. David's fantastic. I'm really grateful to know him. His team has changed my son's life and not just my son's, you know, over 1500 people have been fitted with hearing aids over the last decade through the work we do. Some of the charity events that we hold in the New York metro area, one is at Montefiore in the fall, as well as out on Long Island, we do another one where they fit multiple people. I think we did 20 some just last November in Long Island. And it's emotional. You know, you get to know a lot of people. You get to see people who have exhausted options and couldn't get the help they need to be professionals or to be functioning in their, their current roles. Loss of hearing impacts everyone from young to old. And I've gotten to see all of those people get a lot of help, uh, life-changing help. So it's been good. Yeah, I remember. Well, firstly, I always try to make sure that I, I make one of the missions every year that you're talking about. And I'll never forget the first mission that I attended to really get to a chance to see what happens and what goes on behind the scenes of a golf outing, where now you're seeing the money go towards the recipients that you help. And they asked me to be the photographer for the day and take some shots of these recipients as they got fitted for hearing aids. And they just prepared me and said, you know, I just want you to know that when you go in the room, you're going to see them in tears that, you know, they're going to be crying. I said, Oh yeah. Okay, sure. No problem. Well, the first person that I go to shoot, we open up the door and grown man and he's crying. I, I needed a minute. I was emotional. I didn't, they didn't warn me how it was going to affect me. <laughs> I was just as emotional as they were seeing how this does change their life. You know, there's a lot of things you, you get to hear about changing lives, right? You get to hear about medical miracles and all kinds of things. But where do you get to see somebody in need get something so simple, such a small thing donated to them that changes their lives? forever. It worked. Uh, let me just tell you, my son was the first one I got to see, which was inspirational. But since then, out of all the people who have attended the John Thomas Golf Classic and bid on hearing aids, and some people donate them to perfect strangers. Some people donate them to their own neighbors. Some people donate and, and bid on them because their mother-in-law needs hear better hearing. And I've gotten to see those people after the fact and how their lives have changed and how much better they interact. I just got to see someone who is a distant family member of mine or a couple family members off, but just became a great grandmother for the first time this week. And I got to see her uh, right after that happened, after her grandson gave and granddaughter-in-law gave birth uh, to her first great grandson. And of course she can't be there in person, but needed to hear and needed to see and because of the Help America Here Foundation, she heard great. 
and was able to see her new grand great grandson on video and, and hear him crying and all that good stuff. It just means a lot when you notice that a little bit changes somebody's life and uh, hearing aids, I'm not sure why they're not covered better because they do so much. I mean, the loss of hearing is so profoundly impactful in our daily lives that for somebody to think that they have to live without being able to hear the world around them, it's a tragedy. So I'm passionate about it. And I've gotten to see a lot of other people over the last many years become very passionate about it, like you are, Larry. It means a lot to me. You know, and the changes are instantaneous. You know, we talked about it just briefly there, but that's the word that stands out to me is, Here's a situation where you're instantly changing someone's life and for the better. And that's really what what makes it so impactful, I think, and so powerful is within seconds, now all of a sudden, someone can maybe can hear for the first time in their life. It's truly, truly um, an amazing foundation that I, I just... I just don't see that from other organizations like I see at the Help America Here Foundation missions. A lot of times when you work with charities, you have to wonder and hope that your money goes to the right place. And, you know, I still participate in many other charities and support other charities, but I never get to see it. (laughs) And I just hope that the money is spent well. With Help America Here, there's no question at all where the money goes. A lot of people come up saying that they wish they could give more because they see every little bit goes a really long way. Yeah, and we have committee members and golfers that after the event, they'll come to one of the missions at McGuire's Hearing Centers just to see what an impact they have in helping change lives of of these individuals. Oh, no question. I think that... uh, it, it means a lot for people to see where the impact is, it, where the result of their work is and who it's impacting. And you're right, Larry. At the last one we had last fall, I believe you were there. Many of our new committee members and our older committee members were there. And it's just a blessing. It really is. Because it shows you people are committed to a charity. It's just not something you do to, to fill the time or to fill a a need in your heart, it's it's actually something you're doing to accomplish something. There's people in need. We have a list of people out there who are next in line to receive hearing aids. And every time we show up, we're helping them. So I'm, I'm excited to see who our two next in line candidates are come August 24th. And I'm also excited to see who in our audience or our golfers or or that just come to enjoy the the reception, who has people in their lives who need new hearing aids? And I hope they can bid on them and provide those for the ones they love or or even family members, neighbors, you name it. It's amazing to see people get the help they need. The website again is helpamericahere.org. Again, it's a great organization, great mission. We've already talked about that, but how about the day of golf? It is a great day of golf. It's just a fun filled packed day with great swag, great food. August 24th is a day you you want to try to mark on your calendar. Number one, one of the first few golf outings in the summer that we can have before uh, we turn into fall. So the weather's going to be great. It's at a great club, but also helping a great organization. In addition, it's just going to be, you know, an exciting day, laughs, and maybe some tears on August 24th at the Huntington Crescent Club. And, you know, for all of those out there that are saying, I don't know if it's time to get back out there or, or to do it, just know this. We've been through it. We, you know, many of us on our committee, even our chairman and his wife experienced coronavirus. We're going to do everything we can to make sure that the day is phenomenal and that no one is put at risk. We thought about moving it to October, but, you know, everyone's getting back to work. Everyone's getting back to to life. And August, we need to celebrate what we've been through. And we need to use this as our light at the end of the tunnel to get back on the golf course, to give to a good cause, to support a need that's out there in our communities and help people. And, uh, you know, honestly, we need to have fun together. 
and we're going to do it and we're going to do it well. So as soon as we end this call, I've got to get back to work and putting this together with you and really nailing all the details down on what will make this again an exceptional event. And we're already on course to make this even better than it was last year. So I'm looking forward to any of our golfers that were with us last year returning and also to bringing a bunch of new ones that will be uh, believers. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Also, we kind of go into crunch mode, you know, the last couple of months, which is now where we'll just start conceptualizing. We get the team together, the golf committee, and just start putting plan into action. August 24th at the Huntington Crescent Club. You can sign up online at the helpamericahere.org website. You can certainly contact us at Golf Event Planning. We'll definitely help you get signed up and registered for the event. It's definitely an event that has grown over the last few years, but it's a showstopper every year. It's one of those awesome, awesome days, top to bottom, from checking in right through leaving with great prizes and gifts and also that feeling that you helped somebody in need. Thank you, Larry, for everything you've done to help the organization. My pleasure, Greg. I look forward to uh, seeing you soon and getting back out there on the golf course and doing a bang-up job here with the golf outing on August 24th. All right, you and your family stay safe, and we hope that you consider putting this golf outing on your calendar. We'll be in touch with all the information, but again, the links will be in the show notes. So thanks again for your time today, Greg. You guys stay safe. Thank you, Larry. Ciao, ciao for now. Thank you for listening to the Fairways and Fundraising Podcast, powered by Golf Event Planning. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and please remember to subscribe, rate, and review.